Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store where I've compiled some of the very best knives and gear. There's a whole bunch of different categories, including some of my own personal recommendations. There's something down here for everybody, so make sure you take a look. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the VDK Vice. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting knife, mainly as you can see here in the blade shape. Um, really, really cool. So first off, this knife was lent to me by Jim Skelton. I'm sure a lot of you guys, um, you know, recognize the look of the knife. Of course, I never do as good a job as of creating a thumbnail or my light. I have no idea how Jim does his lighting, but it's, it's, it's just it's better than mine. It captures the essence of knives like these a little bit better, especially considering this is black. Um, but in any case, Jim, if you're watching, thanks so much for sending it to me. Um, I had men uh, mentioned something, on, I had commented on a photo I think that he, he had put on Instagram, and uh, he and I had, had talked a little bit because I reviewed his uh, Hellraiser fixed blade, and he had said, you know, do you want to take a look at this vice? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, really cool. So um, thanks again. I figured most people know who Jim Skelton is, but if you don't, um, <laughs> definitely go check out his channel because he's got some of the craziest, most exotic knives that you've ever seen. And it's directly because of him that I'm even aware of some of these makers. I've been watching him for a long time and he's absolutely, his style has absolutely been influential as I have built my own channel. Um, so anyways, I, you know, first I was like VDK, VDK, why does that sound so familiar? Um, I have not, I mean, they've been making knives for a while. I just have not really familiarized myself with them. And then I, I went back into my uh, videos and I realized, oh my gosh, I've actually reviewed a knife from VDK before, the VDK GOAT. And there are some similarities in the blade shape. Um, anyways, um, that was where the name came from. Uh, this, uh, this, this knife has a lot of interesting things going for it and there's a lot of information here. So I'm gonna try to get everything correct. First off, some information on VDK. So uh, these knives are designed by a gentleman who goes by the name of um, Vlad. The Masarov, I really, I know that I'm messing that up and I'm so sorry, but that's the name of the designer in this guy. Overall length of the vice coming in at a surprising, this is, so, I mean, it's very different. This knife really throws your senses off because of the weight and mass of that blade. And then the handle is just like a totally normal <laughs> handle. I think I was expecting 8.25 to 8.5. It's honestly about 8.75. Your blade is coming in at like four inches and the cutting edge is, that's like 3.9. <laughs> Ratios on this thing are insane. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. Rat looking smaller because of how much muscle is in that blade. I mean, this, it's like, <laughs> this knife kind of looks like the guy at the gym who skipped leg day, right? Big upper body, not necessarily small legs, just normal legs, right? <laughs> That's kind of what it makes me think of. Um, up against the Spyderco PM2, PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Uh, sorry about the glare there. We've got the exposure, we've got everything a little brighter so I can pick up the details in this in this knife. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Pair of three coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. How's the action on this guy? I think general polishings and their attention to detail and the fact that this blade is both fairly thick and definitely material dense, right? It's because of the height in this area of the blade. The blade absolutely falls shut. No question about it. It does not need help. It is going to fall shut. That's really nice. Keep your fingers out of the way because that is like figuratively and almost literally a guillotine. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, if you know to do that, the knife has all of the prerequisites that come with a good flipper. There's no double clutch. Your fingers fall naturally into the right position. The flipper tab is shaped correctly, whether you want to do more of a push button or light switch, it's all there. If you like to fidget with your knives, this is a good one, but it's also something that you have to be cognizant of the fact that that blade will fall and it's not you know it's not all just polishings on the inside it's weight and mass of the blade so you actually there is a little bit of a risk of you know 
getting injured. So just be cognizant of that. It's not necessarily a flaw. Just I just really want to point that out because it is very, very full shut. Let's talk about carry profile. Um, so this is a tall blade. Uh, it is going to create a situation right here where the blade have some has some pretty serious height. So let's go ahead and show it up against the Spyderco uh, PM2 and Para 3, two knives. You guys always say the same thing. Uh, two knives that have awkward carry profiles that nobody seems to really complain about all that much. So in terms of maximum height on the Spyderco PM2, which is you know the closest, right, in terms of how much room is taking up in the pocket, I don't want to actually touch this knife with the PM2, but the height here at their tallest points is pretty similar, right? Um, it's just like this hump on the PM2 is just moved this way because of where, where it is on the blade. So I'm not going to tell you guys that um, this blade is, you know, this knife is like a, has a perfect carry profile. Um, if you carry other stuff in your knife pocket, it's probably going to be a little bit awkward, mostly because of that hump. But truthfully, I mean, when I put this knife in my pocket, the only thing that's different between this knife and, a, and a, just a normal knife is that the where the, uh, I say normal, normal for me to carry, where the um, knife wants to sit is just a little bit away from that back seam because this is pushing up against it, right? So it's a little bit more this way. But the interesting thing is, is that because of the taper of the blade, you'd think a bunch of that blade would actually stick out. No, it doesn't. You can actually tilt the knife a little bit and it looks no different than a regular pocket knife sitting in your pocket. I'm actually really impressed with how easy that carries. Now, like I said, if you're gonna carry other stuff, right? You're gonna tilt this knife a little bit this way. It's gonna take up a little bit of extra room in your pocket. But if you're somebody who, carry, who wears jeans or you know heavy duty pant material, you're going to be fine. It's not going to be really a whole lot different than other big knives that you're probably used to carrying. If you're going to a cocktail party, going to a funeral, going to church, going to a kid's birthday party, you work in an office, ah, use your best judgment. Probably not going to be the best place for something like that, right? Um, but yeah, shockingly decent um, uh, in terms of like how it carries, right? Uh, I'm really, uh, I'm honestly impressed with that. Um, let's go ahead and talk about weight here. So what we're looking at is this beautiful carbon fiber inlay. Um, fairly thick, actually pretty thick titanium carbon fiber inlays. We're looking at probably, I'm going to guess 150 thousandths on the blade. Uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, 150 thousandths on the blade and a lot of material on the blade. The weight is not going to be coming more so. I mean, the the mass, the most, the, the majority of the weights, geez, my... English today. The majority of the weight is going to be coming from the blade. Um, there's not any serious, there's no milling on the inside of the scales here, but I mean, they do mill out, where is my flashlight? They do mill out a portion for the, um, you know, to accept the carbon fiber scales. We'll just use the clicky TI uh, to show you guys. I think you can probably see in there, even though we're running out of, there we go. Sorry, super bright. We're running out of batteries here. There's no milling on the inside of those scales, but you know, Sacrificing some titanium to make room for the carbon fiber, I guess, would reduce the weight a little bit, but it's still going to be a fairly heavy blade uh, knife because of the actual blade. So weight coming in, not crazy, still less than an XM18, 5.19 ounces, a standard Hinderer XM18, 3.5 inch with a G10 scale and a blade with 165,000, that's a 165,000 stock, comes in at 5.24, right? So considering this knife is half an inch longer and it has a blade that's definitely, I, I would say uh, it's probably more massive, both in terms of just like the space it takes up and weight. I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, I'm not saying that it necessarily felt like it was heavier, but there you go, it's confirmation. Um, it's not that bad. It's definitely gonna be too heavy for some people, right? If you're a Benchmade bug out person or a Spyderco Para 3 lightweight person, yeah, this is going to be quite a bit different. Obviously, not not something you're going to enjoy carrying, but this actually falls perfectly um, in you know what I like to carry. I like to carry knives between four and a half and um, about six and a half ounces because I, I kind of like a little bit of heft. I like being reminded that there's something there, and that's about the weight that doesn't bother me. So interesting. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of this knife. So this knife comes in three different configurations that I've seen. Technically, more than that, I guess. Um, you can get red or blue. You can see here these little blue dyed spots in the carbon fiber. 
you have the option between those two um, scale materials. And then the blade can be this black wash that you're seeing right here, um, or it can be satin, bead blasted, and there's even a special, I think they recently took pre-orders for it. Uh, if you wanna pay some more money, quite a bit more money, if they had a mirror polished version of this too. Um, interesting, very beautiful. Um, I have seen how red looks in carbon fiber, and I gotta tell you, if I was gonna have, I've seen green, I've seen red, and I've seen blue, you know, I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. If I was gonna add color to carbon fiber and order a knife to, for myself, I'd probably go with blue. This looks the best to me. Um, and it looks a lot better than like uh, the blue carbon fiber that you see on that, is it the 0850 Rexford ZT? The one, that, not, the, not the sprint run, it's all black, but the standard version of it. This looks a lot better. This looks like something that was, you know, the end result wasn't like, eh, well, okay, this is what it looks like. This looks like it was specifically created to, for these exact contrasts between this exact shade of blue and then the beautiful blade, uh, grays and, and uh, blacks that sort of dance around. I mean, this is really nice. Every time I pick this up, I'm like, man, that looks nice. Really cool. It's also a slightly contoured inlay that's shadow boxed by the titanium scales. That's really aesthetically uh, pleasing. I say this a lot. I really like it. Even when it's not an inlay, uh, when it's just an overlay or scale, right? Whatever you want to call that. It's shadow boxed by the, the liners. I just like how that looks. This is really, really nice. And the fact that it's ever so slightly contoured is just really, it just feels good. It just makes, and stuff like that. I mean, it's really hard to like take the price of a knife and say, well, you're, you're you know, this many dollars goes exactly to this specific detail in terms of the fact that this is an inlay and that it is slightly contoured and it's made of this type of carbon fiber in titanium. It's exactly this. I can't tell you, you know, but I can tell you that if I paid the amount of money that this costs and, you know, pick this up and, and you know, acknowledge this detail, I'd be like, yeah, that's nice. I like that, you know. So just to add some meat and potatoes to um, the definition there. Very simple pivot right there. We'll talk about the handle a little bit more. This is all very nicely rounded off. The blade is awesome. To my knowledge, these are made out of M390. There is nothing on that blade. It is sterile. And that is wonderful. I love that. It's like, you know, I, I can understand Makers putting a little logo on there. Right? I get that. But I love sterile blades. And I know, right, we're going to know who made the knife because we bought it. And you know, it's not like the knife is constantly being advertised. If I'm going to show this knife to somebody, I'm going to tell them what it is, right? I don't need, there doesn't need to be anything on there. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell them what it is. So I'm not necessarily going to, you know, I, I guess dock points from other makers who put their logos on their blades, but I will, you know, huge high five, huge thumbs up to any makers who do this, you know, make their blades completely sterile. I love how that looks. The black wash on there looks really, really nice. Probably wouldn't be my first choice. I'd probably go with uh, satin or bead blasted or mirror polish, I guess, if I could get it. Um, but uh, this does look nice. It's very even. The blade is just, I mean, it's just crazy. You have this, a nice amount of belly, right? Um, and then I I get, should we call this a, sheep, a sheep's foot? I, I mean, I don't know exactly what to call it. This enormous swedge up here. Um, I'll tell you one thing. In terms of practicality, I don't know exactly what the benefit of that is, other than creating a beautifully organic position for me to lay my thumb. Oh, that's nice, right? It's weird for me to emphasize how good that feels with a noise like, oh, but yeah, you guys know what I mean. It's just nice. <laughs> now, I mean, in terms of the blade, right? There's so much material down here that uh, your likeliness to snap a tip made of M390 that's tapering from a maximum thickness of 150 thousandths down to I mean, you, there's a lot of excess durability down there. I'm, trying, I'm looking around for a knife that's also M390 and about the same thickness, and there's not one in my immediate vicinity. But anyways, what I'm saying is, is that the obvious benefits to having all this material here is that if you're really going to use this knife, I mean, honestly, I'm not saying that this is how this knife was designed, but if you're in an extreme situation where you really need to, like, you know, do some impact cutting with a folding knife, the weight here is actually going to allow you to do that. And it's, I'm, you know, in that situation, I would be happy for this excess durability that I gained from all the extra material down here. So I have no idea if I'm on point or not, but I like it. It also looks cool. Um, I'm just going to say that there is definitely a cool factor there for me. 
it's not going to be there for everybody. Obviously, you're going to have some people who are like, I, that's weird. I don't like that. And you're going to have some people who are like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's definitely something that you don't see um, oftentimes in a folding knife. And um, I, for that reason, I, I like it. It's weird and it's a little bit different. So that's really, really cool. There is a uh, pretty substantial flat that carries the maximum thickness out to about 65% the length of the blade. So the blade is has a, an emphasis on strength in a lot of different places. It comes down to a nice sharp edge. It's definitely not what I'd call a laser beam, but also not what I'd call thick behind the edge either. There's also you know nothing in the cutting path. So this is going to be good in a multitude of different settings. Perhaps a little overkill for general EDC, but would it be fun to open a box with this? Yeah, you bet it would. <laughs> That'd be super fun, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's that's the fun of it, absolutely. And you're also getting 3.9 inches of cutting edge, which is great. You know, you still gain the benefit of a tip that can puncture if you need it to, and you get all this extra, you know, Im I guess impact cutting is what I'm going to call it. I don't want to, you know, let any suggest anybody void the warranty on the knife just by doing a type of cutting you're probably not supposed to do with it, but that's what it makes me think of. Some nice shouldering right here. Back of the blade, wrapping nicely all the way around that stop pin so we can get my camera to focus. The camera seems to think that the emphasis is on uh, the background here, which is, I don't know why I'm coming down on an inanimate object. But anyways, yeah, it wraps up nicely. Um, it's just solid lock. A very satisfying click. Ooh, that's nice. Feels really nice. Uh, nice thickness on the titanium. Not that that's necessarily something that we absolutely need, but um, up against the Spyderco uh, Para 3, you can see there it's, it is quite a bit thicker, but not really something that I notice that much in the pocket. Let me put it up against the XM18. This is a knife that I'm comfortable carrying, and I'm gonna guess is about the same thickness, both in terms of scale and in blade. So yeah, it's, it's extremely similar to the Hinder XM18. Um, I think they're about the same. It's just that that um, chamfered area right here is a little bit deeper on the XM18. It's a little more shallow on this guy, which might be giving this guy might be might be making that look visually a little bit more uh, a little bit thicker, but it's, it's it's not. Very simple show side pivot. That's nice because the emphasis is clearly not meant to be on the pivot. It's meant to be on the scales. Um, we have a nice. I'm going to guess that that is a T8 uh, handle screw. I'll go ahead and get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and. We have magnetic driver, two items that are very inexpensive and extremely recommendable. You can find them down there in my Amazon store that I referenced at the beginning of the video under knife maintenance. So you click on the store and then find knife maintenance. You'll be able to find that pretty easily. I'm going to guess that body screw is T8. Uh, I know that Jim carries his knives and uses them. Yep, that's T8. Don't want to do anything else to that knife other than just check the, um, the hardware there because it's still not mine. Moving it over here, you can see we have a beautiful gear pattern backspacer, very simple. This is my favorite style of backspacer. You can see they break up the lines there just a little bit, just for, I don't know, aesthetic appeal. It's very nice. Uh, on the other side, we have more of the same. By the way, there is a lanyard hole for those of you who like lanyards. We have a very simple pocket clip that goes right along with the style of the knife. I'm putting, you know, not, no need to put excess emphasis on the pocket clip when obviously the parts of the knife that you're meant to notice are the scale and the blade. So yeah, I and I enjoy the fact that the pocket clip is simple. Carries about right here. And yeah, you can see, that's all the more that's gonna stick out of your pocket that much. And if you tilt it, I noticed if I tilted it to where you just kind of let this do what it's gonna do in your pocket, it almost disappears a little bit more. So it's, it's really impressive. I have lately come to really prefer knives that are full titanium frame locks. You can see there, I mean, that's, I mean, some people call that a sub frame lock or whatever. I love it when there's an overlay over that because it means I can really squeeze this as hard as I want and all that pressure is, is going to go right into the scale. It's not going to affect the titanium lock bar. Whereas on my hinderer, if I squeeze it, some of that pressure is going to go right into the lock bar because it's exposed out here. Now, all that's going to do while I'm using it is just ensure that that lock bar does not disengaged, but I don't necessarily think I need my hand pressure for that to happen. What it will do or what it might do is cause unnecessary wear in the lock bar, right? It's probably going to be completely fine, but just for those of us who are like, eh, I don't want to see the lock bar wear in that far when it really doesn't need to be, you know, whatever. Some of us are more or less nitpicky, but me personally, I like knowing that I can really bear down on this knife and not 
put excess force or that the excess force won't affect that lock bar. I really, really like those those over or the knife designs like this where the overlay prevents that from happening. So that's nice. We have uh, the actual adjustment side pivot, which I can tell you guys is probably also a T8. We'll just check it here real quick. And there we go. Yeah, that's a T8. So perfect. If you're going to make adjustments to this knife, you can just get your T8 bit out and you're good to go. There's uh, one handle screw in the back, one for the pocket clip, and that's it. Uh, that's really, really great. I want to look in here and make sure. You know, I, I don't. It doesn't look like there's any hidden hardware in there, so there must be one other screw at least holding the backspacer in, because otherwise it might move a little bit. There is a steel lock bar insert. You can just barely see it right there, so the screw would be accessible if you took this overlay off. Um, the lockup is engaging something around 25 to 30 percent. It is absolutely solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right, and the blade is absolutely centered. So that's wonderful. So, um, going over this knife again, there is nothing that I dislike about the ergonomics. It's beautiful. The pocket clip sticks up a little bit. I don't think it's really going to be a problem. This feels very organic. This is nice. Where it's going to, some people are just going to go, no, it's, it's just the, the look of the blade is, is going to um, cause some people to just not enjoy it. I like it. I think it's weird. I think it's weird in a good way. It's different. It's, it's adding, in my opinion, a couple elements of utility that are just nice. And it makes me way less afraid. Like if I was really going to beat on this, I'd be way less afraid of anything happening to the tip because of all the, there's so much height, so much material down here. That's nice. Considering M390 is not known for being ultra tough. You're just, it's left up to the amount of material that you have. Obviously heat treatment has a lot to do with that too, but it's nice, right? Um, carry profile because of that hump that is created. Uh, in the blade. Some people aren't going to like that. I was really surprised at how little problem that created. Um, but uh, yeah, some people aren't going to like that. And then just the overall length of it. It's a big knife, right? Other than that, though, I got no issues with any of this. This is really, really well made. The handle's very simple. It's simple. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to slip off of it. I love the look of the carbon fiber. Um, I, black wash wouldn't be my first choice, but I do like the, the look of this, right? It's, it's dark and interesting and, and still useful, right? And it's still something that you could carry. Um, here's the part that I really love about it. And it's the price. I was, I asked Jim and I was convinced, I was convinced he was going to say five, six, six hundred fifty dollars <laughs> mid techie, you know? But I was just wrong, you know? I, I mean, I'm, I'm shown every single day that I can be wrong about this stuff and it's the evolution of this knife world and how good some of these companies are getting at producing stuff like this and using materials that used to be, you know, um, exclusive to certain price ranges and cer certain, um, you know, uh, how, how they're put together, how they're made. It used to be exclusive to a different tier altogether. Um, these knives run at base, which is, this is technically a base form of this, $350. Now, if you want a... Uh, mirror polished uh, blade, then it looks like it goes up to about 550, but I think those were a special run and limited. I also don't know if these particular ones are limited. Um, as of the time of this video, you can get them uh, at Knife Center. So if you want to pick this up or the one with the red carbon fiber scales, I think you can. I don't know about the, um, the uh, mirror polished blade, but I was really impressed at that price. There's, I mean, everything here that should be here on a $350 knife is, right? Uh, they even have the um, the detent ball ramp. I mean, it's so easy for it to pass up onto the blade, but you know, the, the slightly contoured inlays, the shadow boxing, the beautiful carbon fiber, the excellent fall shut action, exciting, different, has all of the, you know, the key things, you know, on a, on a nice knife, right? But you don't necessarily want to pay five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 to get it. <laughs> this is your perfect package. Um, here's the crazy thing. So normally just that blade, just a blade shape like that, that was so wild and different and kind of tall, right? Normally I'd look at that and go, I don't know, that, that by itself might hold me back from recommending it. But there's so much good here that, yeah, I mean, for the pro I was so pleasantly surprised by so many different elements of this knife. Um, yeah, this is awesome. And, uh, you know, I think VDK became famous for the War Admiral. 
Um, I think this is sure to, I think it's already a home run. There's some other big reviewers who have already taken a look at this. Epic Snuggle Bunny, Dr. Frunky, and of course, Jim Skelton. Uh, and I haven't watched all the reviews, but I, I'd be shocked to find out that somebody just absolutely hated this. I think that this is really cool, you know? So yeah, I can recommend this knife. It'll be going on my most recommended knives playlist. Just understand it's, it's not going to be, for, I mean, everything on that list is not necessarily for everybody, but it's something that I can technically recommend to everybody based on what I think people should expect for their money. I'm sorry, guys. I just had a lot to say about this. Jim, thanks so much for letting me take a look at this. This will be headed back to you shortly. Um, but that's going to be pretty much it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody.